Hey there, this is Dan Bader, and this is another part in my Python functional programming series where we talk about what is functional programming anyway, and where you can learn some of the functional programming primitives in Python, like the filter function, the map function. And in this video, we're going to talk about the reduce function. So if you haven't seen the other installments in the series, then you may want to go back to uh, see what we're talking about. Like, especially I would recommend you watch the first part in the series so you can see um, the, the data structure that we're using in these examples um, or in this tutorial uh, and that, that we're working with. So we're working with a simple data set of uh, scientists and their birth dates and stuff like that. And uh, we're transforming it in interesting ways using functional programming principles. So in this video, I wanna talk about another functional programming primitive that is the reduce function. And because I'm on Python 3 here, I need to first import the reduce function from the standard library. I believe on Python 2, you'll be able to just go uh, reduce and uh, that function will be a built-in that's available in the global namespace. But because I'm on Python 3, I need to actually go from uh, func tools import reduce. And then we can take a look at the doc string here again. And so uh, I love this doc string because I still remember, you know, the first time I was learning how some of these functional primitives work um, in, a, in another programming language at the time and just reading the definition of the reduce function in, in like my first year of computer science education. I was just sitting there and like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And um, well, I hope you don't feel the same, but if you do, then don't worry because uh, you know, you can figure this stuff out and hopefully that tutorial will be a part of it. All right, so let's go over this. Um, so the reduce function, it takes a function and then it takes a sequence of stuff. So I believe for the um, for the map function and for the filter function, those were called iterables. So kind of the naming is a little bit inconsistent here, I guess. But basically uh, the reduce function, well, it takes, uh, takes a function, a sequence, and then an initial value that uh, I believe is optional and it reduces the sequence down to an, a single output value by applying this function repeatedly to the items in this sequence. So um, the way that's expressed in the doc string is a little bit more complicated, but uh, we're gonna take a look at some examples here that actually go back to, to our data set. All right, so just to make sure you see uh, what I'm talking about here. So this is the original data set that we were working with. Um, it is um, an immutable data structure. So there's a tuple of other named tuples. So each item here is a named tuple. And that way we can make sure um, I can't reach in here and actually accidentally modify any of these items or the whole structure. All right, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna do some experimentation here with our um, reduce function. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to calculate the total age of this group. So if you remember what we did in the in the last installment of the series, uh, we did something like this, where we calculated this uh, derived list that had um, the name and age of all of these scientists in 2017. And so um, I'm actually gonna use this derived list for the first example here for, for using the reduce function. So what we wanna do here is we wanna calculate the total age. And for that, we're gonna use the reduce function. And we're going to define a lambda function um, and I could also do this outside with a regular function, but here with the lambda, I think it's appropriate because then you know it could be really declarative and it could um, could all just fit into into one short expression. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a lambda that takes two arguments. The first one is the accumulator, and the the second one is the the value. I, I'm gonna let me type this out, and then I'm I'm gonna talk about what these individual parts mean and what, how they work. Uh, maybe you can figure it out as I'm typing out this function. So this lambda function is going to be applied um, repeatedly to um, to uh, all the items in this list. And so um, val will always be the latest item that we're looking at. And the accumulator will be sort of a running variable that gets updated repeatedly the return value of this function will be the new value of the accumulator. So I know this sounds crazy, but um, 
this allows us to do something like this, where we can say, um, okay, reduce this names and ages thing down to a single value using this rule here, this lambda, and we're gonna start out with an initial value of zero for the accumulator. So let's run this and then let's take a look at the output. Okay, 807. So this should be the sum of all of these ages here. And um, let's talk about how this worked. What you can see here is we have this lambda function that um, is the, the function that the reduce call applies to all of these items. And the way it does it, um, it picks an initial value for the accumulator that I set here. So initially the accumulator will be zero. And then it calls this lambda here with the first item. And you can see here that we're returning the current value of the accumulator, which is zero, plus the value for or the eight plus the age field of this item here that gets passed in. And then in the next round, well, the value of the accumulator was updated. So at this point, it would be 202. And then in the next round, we're taking this item here, the value of the accumulator is, is, 100, uh, is 202, and val is this item here, this dictionary. And now we're adding together the value of the accumulator and the um, value of the age field in, uh, in this dictionary here, and we're returning that, and so on. So this is how we boil down this whole list into a single integer that represents the sum of all of these names. Now in Python, again, uh, there are other ways you would represent this particular calculation. For example, I could have gone like this and said sum of x age for x in names and ages, and that would have done the same thing in an even more concise and nice representation. So at this point, you might be wondering, okay, why do I even need to use the reduce function in this case at all? And um, the reason is that the reduce function, it can actually go far beyond what you've seen here. Um, so we, we can talk about some pretty crazy examples here. Why don't we look at some more interesting uses of the reduce function. All right, so one interesting thing that I thought we could do with the reduce function is grouping scientists by field. So basically, I want to have some output like this. I want to fill this up, this dictionary here, and I want to populate it with um, the scientists grouped uh, by their respective field. And um, we can do that by creatively using the accumulator field, All right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to define a function that we can pass to the reduce uh, to the reduce function that will take our existing list of scientists and assign it to these fields and kind of group people that way. And so the way we're going to do it. Um, there is actually a way you can do this in a single lambda expression, but I, you know, I just started recording, started recording that example, and it was like, man, this actually really detracts from um, from what I want to show you here. So, if you want to do that as a fun exercise, then put it in the comment below. That'd be cool. Um, all right, so here I'm just gonna define my uh, reducer function, and it's gonna take the accumulator and a value. I'm just going to say, okay, in the accumulator, well, you want to look at the field that this scientist belongs to, and then we're just going to append the name of that particular scientist. Um, and then, of course, we need to return the accumulator. So you might be wondering, what, what, uh, what is that? What does that do? Um, you're going to see that in a minute. So here, I'm now typing out the reduce function call. So I need to pass my reducer function and I need to pass my scientists. And then I need to initialize the accumulator. And so here, this is where this thing comes in uh, because we need to make sure that this dictionary here actually has um, slots or has, has these keys in here for all the different fields so that the reducer can go over it and it can update the accumulator according to the individual field that each of these scientists belongs to, right? So now, once I've run this, let's pretty print it out. And yeah, you can see here it worked. So for astronomy, you've got Vera Rubin, chemistry, um, math, and physics. They're all kind of 
um, sort it that way and assign to the right categories. And I hope you can you can see how this worked here with this reducer function. And um, the the main thing you need to figure out is how the or what I, what I was struggling with the most was how these names like accumulator and value how they they correspond to actual items and um, what the accumulator looks like as it gets updated. Right, so that, that's like the biggest thing you need to wrap your head around. And it makes sense to play through this, maybe even on a piece of paper or certainly here in the Python REPL. Um, one thing that I really don't like about this is that I have to give it a list of categories up front that then gets populated. That's kind of stupid. Um, and if I make a mistake, you know, I have a typo here, then it's just all going to blow up. But there is a better way to do it. And that is uh, the default dict class in the collections module. So I'm going to have to import collections. And what we're going to do now, I'm going to overwrite this scientist by field um, object here again. Um, I'm going to pass it my reducer function. I'm going to pass it the scientists. And instead of initializing the accumulator, I'm going to go collections.default dict of list. And then what that will do, I'll show you that in a minute. What that will do is uh, it will lead to the same result because this uh, collections.default list thing or default dict thing is, is pretty magical. So uh, let's just create an instance of that class. So this is a default dict. And now this thing, every time you access a key that doesn't exist, it, uh, it will be created and it will be populated with whatever you pass in here, whatever factory function you pass in here, right? So now I can go and I can put all these crazy, um, these crazy uh, keys here and the dictionary will be updated. So, you know, I can, now I can do stuff like um, X, Y, Z dot append, and this will work because it's going to create that that slot for me, um, you know, just in time. And I can keep doing that. And it will keep updating because now from the second call on it knows that it has this field uh, in there in the default dict and it doesn't need to recreate it. So this is like a little trick you can use to get around having to manually define the accumulator here. But of course, it's also um, adds more complication to this, this function call. And uh, I'll bet you like this would actually take you know, many people a while to figure out and, and to read that. And so maybe that's not, um, that's actually a pretty good reason to not use that in production code. However, um, I think it is, it makes for a really interesting thought exercise in Python. And um, I think it's pretty cool to work with these different kinds of programming paradigms and programming styles like functional programming, object oriented programming, um, more like a pr procedural um, programming. And it makes sense to be comfortable with these different styles, because even if you don't always stick to any one style, you know, 100% of the time, you're going to learn a lot about when these things have their strength, and when you should apply them. And um, I think that is really valuable. And that's going to put you um, above and beyond what most people um, what, what most people do when they learn programming, right? So I think there's a lot of value in, uh, in exploring these things. All right, so I want to end this, um, this reducer example with um, another, well, arguably more Pythonic version of what we looked at previously. And uh, you can see I played with this a bunch because, well, this, this here is called Scientist by Field 5. I was basically trying to come up with ways to, um, to do this grouping. Uh, in, in better and more readable ways. And so now this is based on a dictionary expression. And this kind of fits the theme that happened in the other, other videos in the series as well, where I showed you kind of the classical functional programming approach, and then showed you a more Pythonic version, um, where we're often using uh, list comprehensions or uh, generator expressions to, to get to the same result, but kind of do it in a more uh, Pythonic, more readable way. I'm not sure if, it, if that's the case here, like, I'm not sure if this is more readable, but uh, you know, you can do it. And there's actually a helper function in Python that is um, the iter, iter tools dot group by function. It 
it does stuff like that. It can uh, group things by a key func. So here I'm grouping these items by uh, their field. And then, you know, you have to do some, some fiddling here to uh, to get the keys and the value um, set the right way. So, I mean, arguably this is more Pythonic because it uses a dictionary comprehension, but you know, I'm not sure if this reads much better, but um, you know, it gets around the, the need for the default date. So, you know, I showed you a couple ways to do it. I'm sort of tempted actually to drop the, um, to drop this crazy Lambda expression here on you. Um, but I also want to see what people come up with in the in the comments for for doing this reduction. Um, ah, you know what? Nah, the hell with it. I'll just do it here. Um, okay, so this is what I came up with. Scientist by field it has the same result, and it it uses a lambda function instead of a separately defined uh, reducer function, and it also uses this. Uh, dictionary merge syntax available in Python 3.4. But, you know, this code, this is pretty gnarly and crazy code. I mean, it works, but when you look at this, it gets very, very arcane. So please don't write code like that when you're working with other people. It's sometimes it's fun, like, the, you know, to sit down, spend some time to, to try and come up with, a, I guess, like a single line uh, solution for this problem. But this is more like a fun exercise rather than something you should do in, in, in practice and in for production code. But anyway, I, I hope this gave you a better idea of what the reduce function could be used and um, maybe also some ideas on how it could be used in more creative uh, creative ways to achieve that grouping, for example. And um, not just for the classical examples where, you know, you have this here where we're adding up, uh, adding up a bunch of values and, and, and kind of uh, boiling it down to a single um, integer or something like that. So um, I hope we achieved that. I hope you learned a bunch of things about functional programming in Python here. And um, at this point, you should have a pretty good understanding of what functional programming is, what the filter, map, and reduce functions are, which are kind of uh, the, the core primitives of functional programming, how they work in Python, and how you should probably not use them in Python or use them in different ways, for example, by replacing them with list comprehensions or generator expressions. All right, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment below and be sure to subscribe to this channel for more Python tutorials. Happy Pythoning and have a good one.